12.1a, Rules of Exponents. What is an exponent? What is the job of an exponent? Well, if we look at an example like this right here, this 2, and then we have a little 3 right here, we know that this part, the little number that's raised up, that is our exponent or another name that we sometimes use for those is the power. And then this big number at the bottom, that is called the base. So the job of an exponent is to tell us how many times we should multiply the base times itself. So in this example, since we have 2 raised to the third power, that means that we need to take the 2 and multiply it times itself three times. So we would get 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2, which would be 8. Okay, so for B, we have negative 2 raised to the third power. So our base is negative 2, which means we're going to multiply negative 2 times itself three times. So if I multiply negative 2 times negative 2, a negative times a negative is a positive 4 times negative 2, which would give me a negative 8. All right, in C, I have negative 3 squared, um, or to the second power. Okay, so that just means negative 3 times negative 3, which would be a positive 9. All right, now D looks very similar to C, but what is the difference between D and C? If you'll notice, there's not a parenthesis around the negative 3. So that makes a big difference. That means that the base is 3, not negative 3. So 3 is the only thing that's going to get multiplied times itself, however many times the exponent tells us to. And this negative is just going to be brought down. So I'm bringing down the negative sign. And then we're going to multiply 3 times 3. So that gives me a negative 9. That's different than multiplying negative 3 times negative 3. So we have to pay attention to parentheses. We only multiply the negative if it's in parentheses being raised to the power. Okay, so for E, we have a fraction that's being raised to a power. So as long as the whole fraction is in parentheses, the whole fraction gets raised to that power. So this is like negative one-half four times. Okay, so I'm going to do each part separately. If I do one to the fourth power, one times one times one times one would be one. And then two to the fourth power would be two times itself four times. Okay, so we have two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is sixteen. Okay, for F, first of all, we have a negative fraction. Okay, so if I have a negative number being raised to the third power, let's go ahead and write that out. Okay, so a negative times a negative is positive. So we know these two together would be positive then a positive times a negative would be negative. So we know our answer is negative. 1 times 1 is 1 times 1 is 1. And then 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So we get a negative 1 over 8. Now, based on what we just did, there's a little shortcut that we can remember um, that will help us when we're raising things to a power or negative numbers to a power. If it's in parentheses, if we have a negative number raised to an even power, then our answer is going to be positive. But if we have a negative number raised to an odd power, our answer is going to be negative. 
So say, for example, if we had, um, say, a negative, we're, we're going to use num uh, 1 because if I multiply 1 times itself however many times, then um, it's still going to be 1. So if I had negative 1 squared, it's a negative times an even, an even number of times, it's going to be positive. So in the same way, if I had negative 1 um, raised to the 10th power, well, it's not writing for me. Hold on one second. Okay, negative 1 to the 10th power. Negative a negative number, an even number of times, is going to be positive. But if I had negative 1 to the 5th power, that's an odd, num an odd exponent, so my answer is going to be negative. So that's just a little shortcut that will help you um, when we're raising negatives to powers. Okay, so now let's evaluate each expression. Remember, evaluate just means that we're going to plug something in. They're always going to tell us what we need to plug in. So this says evaluate each expression given that x equals negative 4. So that just means every place we see an x, we're going to plug in a negative 4. Now, x, whatever x is, is being raised to the second power. Well, we know that x is negative 4, so I need to put that in parentheses. Negative 4 is being raised to the second power. So negative 4 squared, negative number raised to an even power is positive, and 4 squared, or 4 times 4, is 16. So for B, we have 2, and then x is being squared, not the 2. If, if it were in parentheses like this, that means that whole part, the 2 and the x, would be squared. But it's not. Only the x is being squared. So 2 times negative 4 squared. So if we follow order of operations, we're going to do the exponent first. So negative 4 squared, we just said, was 16. And then that gets multiplied times 2, which is 32. And that's my answer. Okay, so C is like what I talked about. It's in parentheses. So since it's in parentheses, um, this would be 2, and then 2 is going to get multiplied times negative 4 squared. Okay, so these two things are in parentheses, and then it's raised to an exponent. So we have to do what's in the parentheses first if we follow order of operations. So inside the parentheses, I'm multiplying 2 times negative 4, which would be negative 8. Then we do the exponent. Negative 8 squared would be a positive 64. Okay, for D we have negative x squared. So that's negative, and x is negative 4, and all of that is squared. Okay, so we do what's in parentheses first. Negative negative 4 would be 4. And 4 squared is 16. Okay, what's different between D and E? The negative is not in parentheses. So I have negative and then negative 4 is being squared. So we don't multiply first because it's not in parentheses. We do the exponent first. So I just bring down this negative. And then I square the negative 4. Negative 4 squared is positive 16, so I bring that down. And since that negative came down already, that's a negative 16 for my answer. Okay, so now let's talk about um, some rules for exponents. There's a couple of rules that we're going to talk about. The exponent of 1 rule, the product rule, and the power rule. The exponent of 1 rule says that any base with an exponent of 1, is equal to that base. Just like here, we have 5 to the 1 power. That just means 5 one time, which is 5. x to the 1 power, that's x one time, which is x. But we can also take this rule and go backward. 
if we see a term or a number or a variable without an exponent, it's under, excuse me, it's understood to have an exponent of one. So x with no exponent is understood to be x to the one power. The product rule states that when you multiply the same base, you add the exponents. The base does not change. In this first example, A, our bases are the same and we're multiplying, so that means we add the exponents. So my base is gonna stay Y, but we add three plus five and we get eight. Okay, in B, we have three bases that are the same and then we add the exponents. So this would be x to what power? It would be x to the seventh power because here we have to apply that uh, power of one rule and we know that there's an understood one there. So we have to add that in. Two plus one plus four um, would be seven. Okay, so for C, we have 5x times 3x to the third. Now, here's where we can apply that commutative property of multiplication. Um, remember that we can multiply in any order. So I'm going to uh, rearrange this. You know that when we have a number and a variable just written next to each other, that means multiplication. So this is like 5 times x times 3 times x to the third. So if I rewrote it as 5 times 3 times x, times x to the third, that would be the same thing. So now I can just multiply the numbers, five times three, that's 15. And then if I multiply x times x to the third, remember this has an understood one, so that would be x to the fourth. Okay, so we're gonna apply the same idea here in D, but I'm just not gonna take the time to rewrite it. So let's just look at our bases that are the same. If I look at my a's, I have an a here and an a to the fourth. So that would be a to the fifth. Okay, so I'm done with the a's. Okay, so then I have a b squared and a b. So that would be b to the third. Then I have a c to the third and a c to the seventh. So that would be c to the tenth and then we're done with that. Okay, so the last rule for this section, oh, we're not done with the um, product rule yet. Hold on, let's do a couple more examples. So in E, we have uh, fractions. Now remember, when we multiply fractions, do we need a common denominator? No, not when we multiply, only when we add or subtract. So we're gonna do the same thing. We can multiply the, the number part one half times negative two thirds, that would be a negative. <coughs> and then if I multiply one times two, I get two. Two times three is six. I have an X and I have a Y. So I just bring those down. And anytime you have a fraction, if you can reduce it, you need to reduce it. So this would reduce to one third, negative one third X, Y. Okay, so then in F, I have a negative here. That's understood to be like a negative one. So if I multiply that negative times three, that gives me a negative three. Okay, and then I have A to the seventh and A. So again, I'm multiplying. Um, that's A to the seventh, and then that's an understood A to the one. So that would be A to the eighth. All right, then b to the fourth and b to the ninth, that would give me b to the thirteenth. All right, now we're done with the product rule. So let's move on to the last rule for this section, which is the power rule. The power rule says that when you raise a power to a power, then you multiply the exponents. Okay, so instead of adding these, so we add them whenever, if we were to have y to the fourth, times y to the third, then we would add the exponents. But this is y to the fourth raised to the third power. This is the power rule. So now we multiply and we would get y to the 
12th. If it's in parentheses, everything in parentheses gets raised to that power. So that means we're going to raise this 2 to the third power and the 5 to the third power, which would give me x to the, we multiply those and get 6, and then y to the 15th. Okay, for C, we have 2y squared raised to the fourth power. Now, don't get confused and try to apply the same rule to our big numbers. Okay, so remember, this power rule only applies to exponents. So, if I look at this big number, 2 to the fourth power, that means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So, uh, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. Then, when I do it to the exponent, that's when I multiply. Okay, so that gives me y to the 8th power. So, I don't get the same number when I do it to big numbers as I do to exponents. Okay, so for d, a negative 2 to the 3rd power. Remember, a negative number raised to an odd power, that's going to give me a negative number. 2 to the third power, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. And then I have my exponents. I'm going to multiply my exponents since I'm raising a power to a power, and I get a to the 15th. And that's it.